I've gotten a lot of requests to make more move out videos, so I wanted to really sit down and concentrate and put something very special together for you. So this is my message to anyone who wants to move out of their parents' house. This is coming from someone who moved out twice. And what I mean by that is I moved out fairly early in life. And just a couple years after that, I moved to a completely different state. And this state happened to be across the country. So I happen to know a thing or two about moving out. So if I could go back in time right now and sit down with my younger self, this is what I would tell myself. And just so you know, when I was in my teenage years, especially 16 and 17 years old, I could not wait to get out of my parents' house. Like I felt the urge, I felt the pressure to get the heck up on up out of there. And I love my parents. We don't have a toxic relationship or nothing like that. But I'm someone who just really, really likes control to have control of my own life, control of everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. I want to have control of it and I don't want to have somebody talking about clean your room, clean the kitchen, just basically tell me what to do. I'm not big on that. And so that was the mindset that I was coming from when I was 16, 17 years old. Plus, I already felt like I was grown and I felt like I knew a lot more than I really did. And I felt like I was more prepared for life than I really was. So if I was able to sit in front of my old self, I would tell myself that I'm on the right track, but there's a few things I need to learn. For example, when you want to do something in life, really anything in life, you need to learn as much about it as possible. Instead of just sitting around and thinking about it and daydreaming about moving out and telling your friends and your girlfriend or whoever, that you want to move out so bad and you can't stand the position you're in right now you got to buckle down and actually start doing something about it because in today's economy it looks a little different than it did back then about a decade ago it was a lot more socially acceptable to be moving out at 18 years old and being able to hold it down and afford your lifestyle outside of what your previous home was but now it's a little different because now you might be 25, 26 before you see yourself moving out of your parents' house. And a lot of times, if you do these things incorrectly, when you're between the ages of 18 and 26, you might find yourself moving back in with your parents, which is the whole reason why I made that video. Everything you need to know about moving out of your parents' house without having to move back in because the whole thing, the whole point of moving out is so you don't have to move back in. And I think everybody watching this video would agree with that. Well, the thing I didn't realize was back then was I needed to actually educate myself on personal finances because that is the one great equalizer when it comes to this whole thing. If you understand how to manage your money properly, as boring as it might seem, Everybody likes money and everybody likes to have money. I've never seen anybody say, I can't stand having money. So it's worth it to sit down and understand some basics of personal finances. This isn't the stage in life where you need to get super savvy on certain aspects of personal finances. But right now, you should at least be understanding how much money you need to move out of your parents' house, how much money you need to save to get out of your parents' house, how to avoid debt so that when you're out of your parents' house, you're not spending most of your paycheck on debt, not to mention the fact that you have needs to pay for like food, water, electricity, gas for your car, and things like that. There's a lot of traps out there that appeal to people who don't really understand the consequences of their actions, like student loans, auto loans, credit cards. A lot of these things look like shiny objects. Okay, I got this, so now I can do this. But you're not realizing the damage that it's doing in real time because you won't feel that effect until later when you have to pay it back later, whether it's a month later or it's years later, like after you graduate from college, for example. So you've got to be aware of the traps. And the thing about me is I give so much information on this channel. The thing about me is I have so many videos already about moving out and I even created a playlist for you so you could watch them all. You could binge watch them all if you want to right now, right after this video, however you want to do it. Because there's different messages that I have behind different videos. But you need to learn as much as you can. There's so much free information in just those videos right there and in this video by itself. But the biggest thing that you need to learn right now is personal finances and how to control them.
This is time for you to exercise saving as much money as possible while you have the luxury of being in your parents' house without having to pay like $1,500 for rent or something like that. Some of y'all don't have to pay nothing. So, so for a second, forget about the shiny objects. You know what I'm talking about. The shoes, the clothes, the jewelry, the car note. Forget about all of that stuff and the things that you want outside of that that could be just sucking money from your bank account. Think about how do you get what you truly desire in life by fast tracking yourself to saving. That's why I put together the savings goals tracker and the net worth tracker. And that's why I broadcast my entire net worth so y'all can see not only did I move out, but I moved out, held it down, took care of business. And now on top of that, I'm building my net worth. And now it's well into the six figure range and I just want to keep growing it. But I show that not to brag or showcase anything. I show it so that you can see what is possible and you can do even more than that significantly more than that. So take advantage of the free resources that are out there and learn from somebody who's already done it. That's the thing I would have told myself. I would have picked more people's brains about what it was like to move out. What am I missing? What am I not thinking about? Because all the advice I've ever gotten was, well, you know, the real world is different. Ain't nobody gone into any detail or nothing. They just, all they said was, you got to pay bills. Well, duh, you got to pay bills. That's, I had no idea grown folks had to pay bills, right? It's, it's not like they talk about it every weekend or nothing. I'm not going to get started. I'm going to stay on course, but everybody knows you got to pay bills. But no one talks about the development that goes on when you move out of your parents' house. No one talks about the adversity you face when you're having issues at the job and you're fending for yourself. So you got to figure out how to get through it if you're not getting along with your boss or you're not getting along with your coworkers, or if you got people who work for you, you're not getting along with them. You're in the HR office. There's a lot of stuff that can happen. And all those things, by the way, happen to me 100%. And I couldn't just go back home and be like, oh, well, I quit because I didn't have that in me. I'm the type of person I'm going to push through whatever struggle and whatever hurdle there is in life. I don't care. But a lot of times you're not going to see what you're made of until you do move out of your parents' house. So before I get to my next topic, I want to share this video with you from good old Uncle Dave. Two years ago was a good time to do it. When you were 25, it was a good time to move out. So let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. It's time. It is really good for your personal development, your, your psychological, emotional development to have your own situation. And it's not about out there having a party. That's not what we're talking right. about. We're just talking about being a grown up. Because the comfort zone is a great place, but nothing ever grows there. Get out there and, and scratch around and get you. It doesn't have to be super expensive. I just want you to be standing literally on your own two feet. When you do that, you're just going to see things happen for you. You're going to see a different version of yourself looking back in the mirror. Yeah, it builds confidence. It builds toughness. And uh, it's not a question of can you save more money. It's not a question of is rent wasting your money? It's not a question of you. your relationship with your dad. Uh, all of those things seem to be fine. But I, I would just go, uh, within the next two or three months, I'd be in a place if I were you. And give yourself a written deadline. Before the sun goes down today, write a date on the calendar. Tell your dad that you're moving out. And, you know, how much you appreciate what he's done for you so far and how much you love him. And mm -hmm. some people have to get out of the house because it's a toxic disaster. The reason I play that video is because throughout most of my life, I've been a fairly confident person. But there's those defining moments where you're kind of questioning your confidence a little bit. So little backstory, I did speak on this like maybe three years ago. I'm going to bring it back up because I haven't spoke about it in a long time. And I know there's a lot of new viewers watching this specific video. Back when I was about to go to college, so like right before I graduated from high school, this was probably halfway through my senior year in high school. Of course, this is time to start figuring out where you want to go to college or job shadowing and all this good stuff. But by this time, you got to kind of have your college applications in if you want to start that next fall. So the school that I wanted to go to was ECU, East Carolina University. My parents wanted me to go to NCANT because that's where they went to school, but also it was within the same city, Greensboro, North Carolina. ECU was three hours away from that. And so they weren't really trying to have that. So my parents had different reasons why they didn't want me to go. So my mom didn't want me to go because I wouldn't be close to home. That's a very sweet reason, but um. As you can probably see on my face, I disagree with that. And then and on, on my dad's side of the argument, he felt like, well, that's a party school. People aren't applying themselves over there. I don't even know if the engineering program is accredited because, by the way, I did go to school for industrial engineering. And I had to shut both of them down. Like, first of all, every college on planet Earth 
that I've seen has party people on the campus and like the party on the weekends. As far as I know, that's normal. But both of y'all know I'm not even a big party person. I did try it out a few times in college, but it just wasn't for me. But to add to that, they were having all this commotion, basically talking about, well, you're going to a and and you're going to like it and blah, blah. I'm like, hold on, who's paying for this? You see how quiet it just got? That's how quiet they were. You're paying for it. Of course I'm paying for it. I know. That's So how are you going to tell me where I'm going to school if I'm the one paying for it? I'm the one getting the student loans to pay for it. In either case, obviously, I ended up going to East Carolina University. But I say that because the video was was something that really resonated with me right now and I think if that video was available at the time I was having that conversation with my parents I feel like that would have given me even more confidence because when I did move out and I graduated from college and I started working at a certain tire factory maybe like an hour away from where my parents were living at the time there were a lot of moments where I didn't feel as confident because it's my first time doing the whole full-time job thing just now setting up my 401k just kind of getting my footing and like okay I'm actually on my own now like I don't really have furniture like that let's let's take care of furniture uh, I don't really know how to cook like that let's start cooking and that ended up turning into going to drive throughs and you know what I'm saying cookout McDonald's Wendy's Chick-fil-a type of thing you know what I'm saying? Very nutritious. I was like, okay, I got to buy my own gym membership now. I hadn't had to do that before. So boom, got a gym membership with Gold's Gym at the time. But no matter what I did, I always kind of felt like I was just so behind. I would see people a few years older than me, just like I talked about in my previous video, in that video where I said, you don't need to have a lot of money to be financially stable. Well, I felt like I was financially unstable, even though looking back in retrospect they say hindsight is 2020 20. everything was actually looking pretty good back then the only thing was i had a negative net worth and i just felt like man it's going to take forever to pay off these student loans i didn't know anything about investing and i really didn't know much about saving or budgeting so that's what i'm saying if i was able to sit down with like 17 year old reggie this would be a an extremely valuable conversation i would probably be rich just listening to myself right now and i say that because you learn a lot of lessons in life much later that if they were applied when you were younger you would probably be miles maybe even light years ahead of where you are right now and that's currently how i feel but you know i felt a little uncomfortable there but then you know i had these little bursts of confidence that came out of nowhere where I really understood my worth and all that hardship that happened at work and stuff where I was working every single day, seven days a week, something like 72 hours a week, working all this overtime, still getting mistreated, still being just every single day. It's like, you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you didn't do this. I was getting uppercutted by the words of leadership that was at the company I worked at. The people that worked for me were elbowing me like, mm with their words, of course, they weren't really doing nothing, but mm, mm, talking about you're young, you don't know nothing. Words do not get to me. I'm a sticks and stones type of person, you know what I'm saying? But after so much time of that, things start to weigh on you. But once I overcame certain things, I had a lot of prayer. I talked to a lot of people that I really look up to during this time. But after seeing what I could really do, Things started to turn around. I started getting recognized. Like my team won an award. My performance skyrocketed. And then after that, I just, I was just getting going. You know what I'm saying? I was doing my thing over there. But the feeling never went away that I was being undervalued. I felt like I was working way too hard and being underpaid. And I still didn't feel like I was getting the treatment I deserved. Like after all the stuff I did for that company, I felt like they should have been kissing the ground I walked on. No joke. Instead of the backhanded compliments and, and just completely crapping on my age and saying, you're only 21, you're only 22, 20, I, I stayed there from 21 to 23. So yes, they literally, every single year I had a birthday, they wanted to remind me of how old I was as if I didn't know. About useless, I know. But I pushed through that and when something else opened up, this is where I moved across the country, by the way, but when something else opened up, that was when I was like, this is my time right now. When I had that interview, I was so confident it was probably scary to them 
I'm talking about like it didn't matter. Like I was fully who Reggie Bryant is during that interview. And I knew I was going to get it. Like I performed in that interview, like I knew I was going to get it. I was interviewing them. I was making sure that they were good enough for me to travel across the country. You know what I'm saying? And so watching this video about Dave Ramsey, it's hard to get that level of confidence if you're living with your parents that whole time. Like had I been working at the same place, but living with my parents, Things could have gotten bad because they might have started to see me every day and see the look on my face like, you really look like you hate your job. And at first, the speech might have been, well, just keep pushing right through. But then eventually it's like, well, this doesn't seem like it's a healthy decision for you. Maybe you should look at something else. Hey, you still live with us. You know, I might have started getting thoughts. I, I still live with, with, with my mom. You know what I'm saying? So maybe I quit this job, take a few months off, and then get something else. But I just, I didn't have that in me. <clears throat> and so there were many times where I wanted to quit without having anything lined up. But I was like, no, I am going to just keep pushing through every single obstacle. I'm going to take time off of work, PTO, in order to go to these interviews. And they were just Zoom interviews because obviously I wasn't about to fly all the way out here. Would have been too obvious. And then once I got it, I just kept a poker face, like nothing bothered me, nothing bothered me, boom, 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 just waiting on the offer letter, boom, the offer letter came that day, that day I got the offer letter, I was like, all right, tomorrow will be my last day, amen, they were like, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow I have exactly three weeks to move across the country, so I need to leave like t yesterday, but you're lucky I'm staying until tomorrow, my manager about cried. Because they were already short staffed as it was, which was why I had to work every single day. But you see what I'm saying? The development, the strength and the tenacity that was built in me from being on my own and having to fend for myself could have never been developed if I had stayed where I was. Not that I wasn't getting any development living with my parents, but obviously once you're grown and you're on your own, it's totally different. The level of drive that you have in you has to be different. You can't rely on anybody but yourself. And when that happens, something up here turns on. So if you want to move out, be prepared for that. Make sure your personal finances are in order. All the stuff that you feel like are boring right now, it will behoove you just to take a few minutes, let's say 15 to 30 minutes out of each day just to read. You already probably spend that amount of time scrolling through social media. You know what I'm saying? I do it too. So I know what it's like. So if I'm, do I know y'all doing it. So what I'm saying is that same time you spend scrolling through social media, maybe use that time to learn about saving money, what an emergency fund is, what a high yield savings account is. Uh, and you can do so watching a lot of my videos. Like I, I make so many videos about these things. There's also articles online. There's books about it. I wrote a book. You know what I'm saying? I have consultation services where we can sit one-on-one -on -one and talk about it and see what we can tailor for you. Because sometimes reading certain things, that gives you general knowledge, but does it give you specialized knowledge about you? There's so many things, a lot of which are free, some of which are paid, but I'd rather you spend $50 now to get some life-changing advice so you don't make certain mistakes than to be like, oh, well, I don't want to spend. Why, why do I have to pay for this? Look, you have to pay for it because that's a learning curve that somebody in life didn't teach you. And as you get older, the less you know, the more you're going to have to pay for that learning curve. That's just how it is. You can improve your life with free advice, but sometimes you are going to have to invest. That's why it's called investing. You have to take the risk of losing some money in order for you to gain more knowledge. But $50, that's like the highest on my list as far as coaching goes and consultations. That's not a high price to pay for a life where you can set yourself up, not just for now. I go over the whole thing with personal finances. I, I talk about where you're at and where you're going. That's the important thing. And uh, lastly, you just got to be able to expect something not going according to plan. So even once you do figure out the personal finance stuff, sometimes your budget will not go according to plan. Something could pop up out of thin air. I promise you it's happened to me at least twice in my adult life. Or you might need to help somebody out or something like that. Like Things, things just happen. Life is going to happen regardless of what your goals and plans are. 
you just have to be willing to push through that and continue to have the same tenacity to go towards your goals. And you have to plan for things not going your way at work. There's been times where I, I just knew I was going to get promoted and, and it didn't happen. But eventually it happens. So you have to be willing to work with yourself and be patient. This is a long game now. This isn't like a two to five year thing. This is like a rest of your life type of thing because you don't ever want to move back in with your parents. So when you look at it that way, you have to really build yourself up. And I would say this, don't miss work. I've, I said that in a few videos. I really want that to resonate. Don't miss work. I am a manager at my current job and I've been in management for almost eight years now. And the biggest thing I see, young and old people do this, by the way. And there's only a few that are consistent with not doing this, but young and old people, they just call out of work. And it's not even like emergency level stuff. It's, it's literally like, I just don't want to go to work today. I'm good. That's going to, so the, the personal finance portion of this, you're expecting a consistent paycheck. Okay, if you do something to stifle your pay, guess what no longer becomes consistent? Money. And even if you feel like you can call off one day and then make it up doing overtime, sure. But what happens when something real pops up and you can't work the overtime and you can't make it up? Whatever your industry allows there's going to be some opportunities to make more money than usual. That, that is not an invitation to just say, I'm not going to work. A lot of us adults don't want to go to work at some point or the other. But part of being an adult is doing things that you do not want to do. For me, I know I want to have kids. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I know that I myself like nice things. So I'm not missing work for nothing unless it's an emergency. And even then, I'm going to do it the right way. And so imagine having people that you're responsible for, that look up to you, that need you to win. Can, you not going to work is a version of giving up on yourself. I just wanted to, to throw that in there since we're talking a lot about jobs and, and money and things. The job is how you make the money. The money, once you get it, you have to know how to manage it and not overspend it and just do whatever the heck you want with it just because it's the fun thing to do. You have to look at some of the boring things sometimes because that's going to multiply the amount of fun and just leisure and relaxation that you can have with it. And most importantly, you have to have the confidence to continue increasing your value and increasing the value that you bring to whichever company you work for, or whichever business you run. You have to continue growing as a person. But first, you have to plan what it looks like to move out of your parents' house. You have to save for certain things. And that's why I created the move out guide. And that's why I created my video on how to save money for your first apartment. Go check those out after this video. It's a special treat for you. All of it is 100% free. I really hope you got something out of this video and enjoy this video. I really enjoyed making it. These are my types of videos that I really get fired up because not only am I telling you my own story, but I'm coming from a passionate place where like these real things happen to me and similar things could happen to you. You just gotta be ready for it because if you don't know what you're getting into, sometimes it's gonna stifle you and actually make you backtrack further than what you wanted to do and end up in a worse spot than you were before you moved out of your parents' house. So that's why I wanted to bring that to you. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I will see you in the next video.